Okay, so we finally made it as I trip over my foam roller. We finally made it to week 10, round two. Yay, so this is super exciting. Uh, technically, I guess it would be week 20. <laughs> Uh, but we are going to start with our strength day. So what do you need for today? So we're working in circuits, 45 seconds of work. Uh, and we also have lower body and then upper body and then lower and then upper. So you might need various weights if you have that available to you. But if you only have a select few, that's fine. Uh, but if you have something heavy, grab that for weights because we do have deadlifts and lunges today. But also grab something that you'll be able to tricep kick back with. So something not too heavy. So I'll give you a moment to go grab all your equipment and then whenever you're ready, you'll be back on the floor and we're actually gonna start with foam rolling today. So grabbing that foam roller, our first circuit is actually a lower body circuit. So we're gonna warm up the lower body on the foam roller. So as you work your way towards the floor, sit with your hip onto that foam roller and then lower onto the forearm. You're gonna extend the same leg that is on the foam roller out and then your top leg is gonna to come to the front, foot onto the floor. Once they are float the bottom leg, and then start to roll through the foam roller. So you're really hitting the glute muscle, making sure we stay on the tissue and we're avoiding any kind of bone or joints. You wanna hit that soft tissue, warming it up. If you sit a lot, this might feel extra tender. So if you have an extra tender spot, feel free to just hold and then gently rock back and forth as you stretch that out. If you're just joining us, don't forget that our yoga class launches today on YouTube at 2 p.m. I hope you get a chance to check it out, very exciting. Every Monday at 2 p.m. you'll get a new yoga class release, so make sure you subscribe and turn on the notifications. All right, from here, we're gonna work into that IT band. So we're gonna take the foam roller about mid upper thigh. We're gonna float that leg again, and then rolling from the knee towards the hip. So nice and easy. Staying connected with that breath. Now if you're a runner, you do a lot of stuff, this might feel real tender. So if you need to keep pressing more and more weight out through your stabilizing foot to relieve some of that. And then slowly release. We're gonna to come to the front so we can actually sit onto the hip coming off that foam roller. You're gonna take it under the middle of your hamstring, hands behind you, fingertips away, press again through your stabilizing foot, and now roll through the hamstring. Staying on the same leg, we haven't switched legs yet. And when you do the hamstring, feel free to rotate the foot in different directions as you hit different parts of that hamstring as you rotate that foot. Keep breathing. Make sure even as we're lifting the upper body that you're not putting a lot of tension through the shoulders. So keep relaxing the shoulders down. I start slowly release it onto the hip. So we're gonna switch sides. I'm gonna pivot around so my back side's not towards you. But we're gonna take the foam roller right under that hip again. The same leg stays on the floor, other foot comes to the front so we can float that leg and then again we roll through the glute. Each side of the body might feel different so maybe you don't have a tender pressure point on this side. But whatever you might need, if you need to hold one spot and then just rock, or if you need to roll through the entire muscle, You've got that available to you too. For those just joining, welcome, welcome. Go ahead and grab your foam roller and join in with us. And again, slowly releasing. We're going to take it into that IT band. So right under the middle of the outside of that thigh, float the leg again and then roll through. This might feel like the most tender part, especially if you don't foam roll a whole lot. And then slowly release, shifting it backwards and having a seat. So from here again, we're gonna take it underneath the middle of that hamstring, fingertips face away from you, lift up and then roll through the hamstring. Same 
Staying nice and connected with your breath. And again, feel free to move the foot in different directions. Flexing it, maybe turning it out, maybe turning it in. And then slowly release, coming back to center. So we don't need the foam roller for now, so just go and set it off to the side and then work your way back up to stand. So for our first circuit, we have three rounds, 45 seconds of work with 15 seconds of rest in between. We're gonna do the same move three times before we move on, but each circuit has three different lifts. So in your first circuit, we have front squats, deadlifts, and lunges. So what does this mean? This means that we're going to be doing front squats three times for 45 seconds, 15 seconds off, then we're gonna move on to our deadlifts and then our lunges. So to start with, grab a weight that you can hold in your front rack position for three rounds of 45 seconds of work. I'm gonna ramp up my heels. So I'm actually gonna grab two sets of weight. One's just gonna be my stabilizer for my heels. And then the other is going to be my work, my work weight. So we're gonna start in 15 seconds. So remember in your front rack position, the head of the weight is just kind of nestled in the shoulders. It's not back here resting. And then the forearms stay parallel with the floor. So we don't want them dropping. We want them nice and high. All right, three, two, whenever you're ready, front squats, 45 seconds of work. Drop your tushy all the way down. Sit between the knees. Keep driving the fingertips up towards the ceiling, making sure the triceps stay nice and parallel, especially the bottom of the squat, don't let it drop because then it's gonna really pull you forward. And we don't want to round the spine, we want to keep it nice and neutral. Stay connected with that breath. Inhale as you lower, exhale as you press up. I didn't mention it, so if you didn't already do it, count your reps on the next one and then try to match it for round three. Slowly release. If you are ramped up, set off. You get a 15 second shake out. Shoulders are probably going to get as much work as the quadriceps. So stretch it out, whatever you need. 15 seconds is not long, so get that weight. Three, two, round two of three, we're back in it. Same thing, keep the elbows up, keep the triceps parallel off the floor. Drop the hips, then press the floor away. If you're inclining the heels like me, just make sure the ball of the foot's still making contact with the floor and you're pressing through the heel. Just like you would if your foot was flat on the floor. Count your reps on this round so you can match it on number three. Stay with it, you got it. Less than 10 seconds. I don't know if you can hear, but my knees are <laughs> popping all over the place. And slowly release. Ah, uh, mid 30s. It's a good place to be. <laughs> Again, shake it out, whatever you need. One more round, so stay with me. Three, two, rack them up. You can clean them up, rack them up, however you want to get there. Get yourself set up and we're already in it. Sit your hips back as low as you can. Even if the feet are flat on the floor, so what we want to avoid is the knees coming forward and the heels lifting. So if you have limited ankle flexibility or hip flexibility, it might help to lift the heels. So you can sit nice and low, getting the hips below the knee joint, getting as deep into the squat as you can. 15 seconds. But if that's not available to you today, just try to get to parallel. And again, if that's not available, just as low as you can with the squat without folding forward and without losing that heel to floor integrity. Three, two, and release. Okay, deadlifts are next. So if you have weights available, you can probably do a heavier weight in a deadlift than you can a squat. So we're gonna do Romanian deadlifts. We go in three, two, and we're in it. So making sure the weight stays super close to the body, push your tailbone back, nice flat back throughout the entire exercise. So especially at the bottom, don't let the weights pull you forward and round your upper back. Keep that integrity. Keep pulling the shoulder blades together. Pressing the entire foot into the floor like you're trying to actually press it through the floor. We do that so we have a good foundation from the feet. Slight bend in the knees, but not much. This is very different than a squat. This is a hip hinge, not a knee hinge. 
And again, keep those shoulder blades pulled back and down together. Now they have time for one more. And then release the weights and rise back up. How many did you do? You're gonna match it on the next two rounds. Remember, 15 seconds is not long, so we go in five. So don't go too far away from your weights. Three, two, deadlift to get them, and then deadlift through the exercise. So keep driving the tailbone to the wall behind you. Nice, long, flat back. Stay connected with your breathing. Make sure you're not holding your breath as you do this. We definitely want to avoid that. Keep your core really strong too. So make sure at the top, we're not just pushing the hips forward and popping the rib cage open. At the top, you're just gonna squeeze the glutes and have a nice vertical plank. Ankles are directly under the hips, hips under shoulders, shoulders right under ears. So nothing should be forward or back. Five seconds, three, two, and done. Nice job. All right, one more round for your deadlifts. Hope you're feeling it in your hamstrings and your booty. If at any time you're feeling it a little bit in the lower back, just make sure you're not rounding at any point. And make sure you're sitting the tailbone back and not squatting down. Three, two, all right, we're in it, let's go. Staying with those deadlifts. Keep pulling those shoulder blades together. Keep your back nice and flat. Keep driving the tailbone back to the back wall. Inhale as you lower, exhale as you rise. Inhale with gravity, exhale against it. Always exhale with your work. Your breath will help with your lifts. You got it, come on, five seconds. And release, nice job. All right, safely set your weights down. Take a nice breather as we transition into lunges. So you can have one weight holding goblet style or two weights, which are going to just frame the leg. So you choose, grab one or two. First round, we're gonna do right foot forward, left foot back, lowering and lifting the back knee. So as you go into your lunges, make sure that both knees are at a 90-90. So we don't want to be leaning forward and straight that back leg. And we definitely don't want to have that front leg straight. So it's literally just an up and down motion. It's not a forward and back. You can have these weights hanging in a dead hang. Or if you're limited with weight options, you can hold it goblet style and achieve the same thing. So if you don't have a lot of weights to choose from, pick however variation you would like to do. Remember which leg is forward right now because we're going to do the other leg next. Three, two, and release. Nice job. All right, quick shake out. Remember, 15 seconds is not long. Next foot, left foot forward, right foot back. Same exact exercise, five seconds away. If you did two weights on the other side, two weights on this side. If you did goblet, then goblet. All right, get yourself set up, and we're in it. Let's go. So again, make sure you're at a 90-90 for the knees. Lunges shouldn't really hurt the knees that bad unless you already have pre-existing knee issues. We want to focus on the muscle. So as long as your alignment and your form is really good, you should feel it mostly in your quads, hamstrings, and booty. As I lose my balance. <laughs> Stay with it, you got it. Less than 10 seconds, keep that chest upright. Step it together and then release the weights. All right, we're gonna do alternating lunges next. For your last set, you can do forward or reverse lunges, whatever suits you better. But however you've been holding the weights, we're gonna do that again. So I'm gonna go reverse, but if you like forward lunges better, feel free to take it forward. Alternating legs for 45 seconds. Stay connected with your breathing, keep your core up. Keep your chest upright. Exhale as you press the floor away. Inhale as you lower down. Nice job, stay with it. Legs 
Less than 10 seconds, you're almost there. And then we're down with the lower body for a little bit. And release. Whew. All right, take a minute. Breathe, grab some water, whatever you need. We're gonna move into the upper body. So, same style. Doing back-to-back -back moves of the same move, and then moving on to a different muscle group. So your first one is overhead press. We're gonna take that wide to start. After that, we're gonna do a curl to an elbow raise or an upright row, curl to an upright row, and then lawnmower. So this one you can probably grab one heavy weight, maybe something you squatted with or maybe deadlift. And we're gonna do rows on one side, and then when we come back through, we'll do the other side. So whatever side you start with, keep in mind you're gonna do it all three times before you move on to the other side. So we're gonna go on 15 seconds. Overhead presses first, 45 seconds of work, 15 seconds recovery, we do it three times. Count your reps and try to match it all three rounds. Five seconds away, so get your weights for your overhead press it, get them up, and then whenever you're ready, press all the way up and back down. So make sure in your overhead press that you're not popping the rib cage open and pushing everything forward to get it up. Keep the ribs pulled down, keep the hips and ribs pulled towards each other. Your weight should be next to the ears at the bottom, and then your biceps next to the ears at the top. So we get a nice, long, straight body. We're not like stopping here and going back down. You go all the way up to the ceiling and then back down. 15 seconds, stay with it. If you have heavy weights, feel free to push press. So to achieve that, you bend the knee slightly forward and then you lock it out at the top. Knees and arms go up together. Bend and press it up. If you need that little extra push, release. 15 seconds, shake out. Stretch whatever you need. And then we do it again two more times. So how many reps did you get? You're gonna match it again two more times. 15 seconds is not long. Three, two, here we go. Feels like when break comes, you can walk away, but you really can't. 15 seconds is not that long. Stay with it, you got this. If your shoulders get really tired, Feel free to drop the weights for a second, shake it out. Especially if you've already leveled up, you're moving with heavier weights now. I know, my shoulders are dying too. Especially after front back squats. Whew. Well, we got seven seconds left, so you're in it, stay in it, come on. Three, two, and release. Whew. Shake it out, nice job. One more time, <laughs> don't go anywhere. Less than 10 already. Five seconds, stay with it. Three, two, and we're in it, let's go. Rock up those weights. Oh, I forgot too, when you're in your overhead press, make sure that the weight is not hinging your wrist backwards. So you want a nice neutral wrist, knuckles up to the ceiling. So if at any time you start to hinge that wrist, maybe drop to a lighter weight, or just try to really grip it and line that wrist directly over the forearm. So you have a lot of strength coming from that forearm and into that wrist. 15 seconds. You'll feel it too, at least I do, when the wrists start hinging, it's very uncomfortable. And weightlifting should not be uncomfortable in the joints. And then slowly release. All right, you're probably gonna need something a little lighter here. And I forgot to grab mine, so I'm gonna have to go off screen for a second to get it. I'll get you going first though. Or doing curl to the rip, to the rows. So you need something you can bicep curl with. So whatever weight you have, you're gonna do one bicep curl. We're in it. Let's go. Upright row. Bicep curl. Upright row. So remember on the rows, the elbows go slightly back. You're in it. So go ahead and start. Make sure the elbows aren't lined up with the shoulders. They're going slightly back. You're already in about 15 seconds. I'm gonna go grab my weights and then I'll meet you back. <laughs> Two more rounds. 
One down, two more. Five seconds away. Get ready, we'll go again in three, in two. Here we go. Curl it all the way down. Row it up. Curl it. Row it up. You got this. Come on. Curl it. And then row it. Oh, so make sure too on the rows that we're not going so high that we have to hinge the wrist this way to make space. So you only want to bring the waist to about the bottom of your chest. If you're a female, about the bottom of your bra strap. So just make sure you're not hinging that wrist just to make space because that's going to force your shoulders to go forward and so it's going to cause everything to get out of alignment. So keep the shoulders back and keep your wrists nice and neutral. Elbows are leading and release. One more time. One more time. Less than five seconds. Three, two. All right, we're in it. Here we go. Curl it, row it. So we've got biceps and shoulders together. Your biceps are also an accessory muscle, so they're still getting a lot of work, even when we're not just strictly curling them. When we row, they work hard. And remember to keep pressing the feet hard into the floor. Soften in the knees, but you have a solid foundation from the feet. So if we're real lazy through the feet, it's gonna get sloppy through the upper half. And when you're trying to go heavy with your weights, you're gonna start swinging the body. So start from the floor up, press the floor away, soften the knees, use your foundation. So we don't have to swing the body around, but we can really focus on the lift and release. All right, long lower is up next. So you need one heavy-ish dumbbell. I think I lied. No, I'm right, I'm right. Long lower is next. So you're gonna set up kind of like in a lunge position. And just like you're starting a lawnmower, if you have this kind and not a push to start one, you're gonna row it all the way up. And again, you're gonna keep pulling, just like we do in our rows, you're pulling that weight towards the back hip pocket. So we wanna make sure we're not pulling up towards the chest and the shoulder and our elbow gets all out of line. You wanna keep pulling it back with a little chicken wing. Keep pulling it back towards the back hip pocket. You should really feel this in the arm that you're lifting with all around that shoulder blade. Stay connected with your breathing. Exhale as you row, inhale as you release. Three seconds, stay with it. And set it down. Shake it out, nice job. So you really should feel that in the rhomboid, the big muscle in your upper back. If you're starting to feel it, maybe like in your traps, your shoulder joint, make sure you're not keeping that shoulder forward and you're not rowing up towards the armpit. All right, get yourself set up. And we go again. If setting up in this leg position is uncomfortable, you can always put your hand on the table or something that will help too. The more upright you are, the easier this will be. And again, we talk a lot about the wrist, but really make sure the wrist isn't hinging. You wanna keep that wrist nice and neutral throughout the entire row. So you never want to choose a weight, maybe that's too heavy, it's, you can't keep it through the grip strength. So if you need to, no ego amigo, right? Drop to a lower weight. And also make sure we're not taking that weight so far down that we release this engagement through the upper body. Pull that shoulder blade back and you only drop the weight enough where you can literally kind of dangle it out here in the air and release. We have one more time before we switch sides. Right now, breathe, grab some water, but don't go too far. You go in three, <laughs> you go in two. All right, we're back in it. Last time on this side. Keep that weight super close to your body. Keep pulling the weight towards your back hip pocket. Make sure you're not releasing the arm forward. Letting go of that engagement through the upper back. The weight doesn't have to go like all the way down to the floor of chin. It can stop at your knee. And then you roll right back up. Really focus on your upper back. That's what we want to be working here. So stay connected with what we're working. Ten seconds. You're almost there. Come on. Stay with it. Nice job. And release. All right. All we're literally going to do is turn the other way and turn the other arm. So nice and easy. 
Three times. How many reps did you do on this arm? Try to do the same on the other. That way we're strengthening the sides of our bodies evenly. All right, get it set up. And then row. 45 seconds, we're in it. Same thing, really watch your form. Stay engaged. Keep pulling towards the back hip pocket. Keep the upper back nice and engaged. Exhale as you pull, inhale as you release. Five seconds, come on. And release the weight. One time down, two to go. How's your grip strength? <laughs> if you're lifting heavy weights, you're probably feeling it a lot through the forearms and <laughs> through the grip. Three. Two, and let's go. I don't know what those things are called that you squeeze. <laughs> I have on as a little kid to try to strengthen my forearm. When you lift heavy, you don't really need to do that because they're getting a lot of work just holding the weight. So I know my mom does these workouts later. So call out to dad that he still has that on his work desk. I know he does. <laughs> Less than 20 seconds. Come on, you got this. Ten seconds. Three, two, and release. Whew. All right, I got one more. One more. And then we move back into the lower body. We get to give the arms a break for a second. All right. Get ready. Pull on five. Three, two. All right, we're in it. So keep the core really strong here. And then the arm that's resting on the leg, make sure you're not sinking into that shoulder. Press it away. That's why I say if you need a table or something, that might be easier. Because we don't want to be super lazy through one side while we're working the other. So keep pressing yourself up and out of that shoulder joint. Three, two, and keep breathing. You got this. Ten seconds. You're almost there. Five seconds. And release. Nice job. All right, up next, back to the lower half. So we have wall sits, bridges, and side lunges. Let me slide down the workout. So because we're doing this in threes, if you want, I'm going to make it optional this time, to level up for your wall sits. And you know if you did it in round one, you really should do it in round two. You're gonna bring a weight over with you to your wall sit. We're gonna have the heaviest weight for the first wall sit, something lighter for the second, and then no weight for the third. So as the legs get more and more fatigued, we're gonna drop the weight. So we go in about 25 seconds. So if you have two light to moderate weights, you're gonna bring both for the first wall sit. Then we're gonna drop one for the second and then have none for the last one. So I'm gonna try 15s, but we'll see how this goes. Can't commit to a full 45 seconds, we'll see. Five seconds away. Three, two, and place them on the thighs and have a seat. So ideally, you should be sitting low enough that if you let the weights go, now if there's circle weights, that might not work for you. You don't have to hold on to them because you're at a perfect 90 degree. Your thighs, your femur bone are holding the weights. If you feel a little uneasy with that, just gently place your hands on the weights to kind of hold them in place. But don't literally hold the weights in your hands. We want it adding weight into the wall sit. You're already 30 seconds in, 15 to go. You got this. Stay connected with your breathing. I know the legs are shaking. You're almost there. Don't give up. Three, two, and sit up. Woo. Okay, you're going to release one of those dumbbells. Get ready to go again. Three, two, and you're back in it. So this time you're gonna place one head of the weight on each thigh 
All right, you need two or one dumbbell, depending if you want to hold it goblet style, if you want to frame the legs. Right side, side lunges, three, two, and we're in. All right, as you step the foot out, make sure that the right foot steps out and it's in the exact same plane as the left. So we don't step it forward or back. It stays in that nice, even plane. And then the weights frame the right leg. Your chest is parallel to the floor, hovering over that right thigh. And then you press everything back up to stand. So side lunge and bring it back. All 10 toes facing forward. So we're not turning the right foot out to the side. If you work out weightlifting shoeless, you should see all 10 toes facing forward. If you're wearing shoes, just <laughs> be within the body and know where your feet are placed. Three, two, and release. You can set the weights down, but walk it over to the other side of your mat. We're gonna go to the left this time. <clears throat> Same thing, all 10 toes and hips face forward the entire time. Nothing's rotating out. Three, two, let's go. It's really easy to rotate towards the left and to turn the left foot out. So really keep everything facing forward. If you're with us live, maybe you can see yourself in the camera. If you're doing this later on demand, maybe work out in front of a mirror and just watch where your toes are going until you get really familiar with the exercise. Make sure the weights aren't making your upper back round. We don't want to feel this in the lower back. We want to feel it in the outside of the hip and the inner thigh. Seven seconds, stay with me. And release. Come to the center of your mat. We're going to alternate side to side. So just make sure you have enough space to actually step side to side. My camera, that looked like I was doing this. <laughs> You're welcome. Three, two, Let's go. Things look very different on camera than they do in real life. <laughs> Keep pressing through the outside edge of the foot that stepped out to bring it back in. So if I step out with my right foot, my right outside edge of the foot is pressing myself up. Left, the outside edge of my left foot. So you're really activating the outside of that hip to get yourself back up. Make sure you're still staying in the same plane. We're not stepping the foot forward or back. Five seconds away. And release. Whew, we made it to our last circuit, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, upper body to finish. All right, man, I did not have my life together today and I didn't get these weights either. So we have tricep kickbacks. I even warned you to get them. Wide rows and a lateral raise. So if you also don't have a light enough weight for a straight arm extension, go grab your weights and then meet me back and we'll get started. You have about a minute. Before we go, so shake it out, grab some water, whatever you need to recover. Fifteen seconds away. We start with those kickbacks. So you're gonna pull the elbows up and behind the body, and make sure they're really narrow, so they're not out here, right? And then once they're here, we're just gonna kick them back by straightening the arms and bending the arms. All right, three, two, row up, hold, and then straighten and bend. So really focus on the back of the arms, the triceps. Keep pulling the elbows towards each other, so they're not going out super wide. And then I know that it's gonna get tiresome, but really avoid the elbows starting to drop. Keep them up and behind the rib cage, like little chicken wings. But as you do it, also avoid shrugging, because it doesn't feel good, also not good. So relax those shoulders. Find the length through the neck. Keep that upper back nice and engaged by pulling the shoulder blades together and down, and then activate the core. I know I'm throwing a lot at you, but we wanna have really good form when we lift. And rest. Two more times. Even though we're doing tricep kickbacks, everything else is working. You really can't isolate. <laughs> the whole body works as a unit. So we wanna make sure that we're not just kind of letting go somewhere else to do this. Three, two, and let's go. 
45 seconds. Really get the back of those arms. Straighten the arms all the way out. Keep those elbows up. Keep your feet pressing into the floor. Keep your core strong. You got it. Relax your shoulders. Breathe. All these little tiny changes are gonna make your lift so much better. Less than five, come on. And release. Woo, I hope you felt that in the back of the arms. One more time. Oh. One more time. We go in five. We go in three, two. All right, we're in it, let's go. Again, relax those shoulders. Extend the arms all the way back. See how my elbows are close together. So if we're out here, bring them in. I know as the triceps get tired, the elbows want to flare out. So you're gonna have to purposely keep bringing them back in. You're gonna have to purposely relax the shoulders so you're not tensing up as the arms get tired. You have to purposely think about lifting when you're doing it. It's not a mindless exercise. And release. Whew, nice job. All right, we have bent over wide rows. Don't go anywhere. I'm going 10 seconds. Keep them in and pull those elbows back to make sure they're not in line with the shoulders. Three, two, hands like you're doing your deadlift, and then pull it up. Squeeze the shoulder blades together at the top, and then slowly release the weights back together. Exhale up, inhale down. You should really feel this through the traps, which is the muscles right around the neck, and your rhomboids, which is your shoulder blade muscles, and your biceps. All of those are working right now. One lift and you get so much from it. Rows are so good for you. Less than five, stay with it, yes you can. And release. I know, I know, I know the arms are getting tired. We are so close to finishing, stay with it. One down, two more to go. We might have to do an express lateral raise round. <laughs> so we run out of time. Three, two, one, let's go. If you're on live with us and you only have 45 minutes, here's your mark. You need to take off. I'm super sorry for going over today. Come back and do the rest of the recording later if you have to leave. But if you can, we only have a couple more minutes. Stay with it. 15 seconds, you're almost there. Make sure you're still hinging from the hips. We don't want to be standing up right. Three, two, let's go. 
So the arms are pretty straight. You can have a slight bit on the elbow, but not a big one. Make sure the arms are lining up with the shoulders at the top. So they're not coming forward. Press the feet hard into the floor, slide bend in the knees, hips and ribs towards each other. Tuck your chin to your chest. Try not to swing the body to get the weight up. If you have to do this, <laughs> grab a lighter weight, grab a lighter weight. 30 seconds, you're halfway. Feel those shoulders. Can you stay with it for the finisher? Come on. Fifteen seconds. Yes, you can. Let's go. Less than ten. You're almost there. And release. Woo. Feel those shoulders. Oh, man. Nice job. You crushed that. Take the arm across the body. Make sure the shoulders are staying squared up so we're not lifting one above the other. Stretch it out. Week 10, strength day one, awesome job. Next week, we level up by getting heavier weights, switch arms. So if you haven't had a chance yet, you have one week to go get those weights. Tricep stretch, take the hand up and back. Release, switch sides. Release, interlace the fingertips behind you. Press the knuckles to the floor. Open up the chest and stretch the shoulders. Two final stretches. Let's do the legs. Fold forward. Take the hands behind the ankles or the calves. Pull your chest towards the thighs. Bend the knees, roll it up. If you're not on it, focus so much on balance, find a spot on the wall to hold on to. Grab the foot, knees together, hips push forward. Slowly release, switch sides. And release. Woo, awesome job. All right, that's it. Tomorrow is cardio day. So get ready to have your heart rate skyrocket through the roof. Until then, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.